So Autopilot has been in the news recently, most recently because of a fatal Tesla Model S crash in Florida that involved a crossing tractor trailer um, under which the Model S went while it was on autopilot, essentially shearing off the top third of the car and uh, killing the driver. Um, and there's also been some uh, other automated incidents such as um, one in Europe where a uh, Tesla Model S was on um, cruise control actually and the car it was following uh, switched lanes. This was at low speed and then there was a parked truck in front of uh, that car and um, after giving a, uh, um, alerts to the driver um, the Model S instead of automatically braking um, hit the uh, truck or bumped into it. There's also an incident where a uh, owner did not realize that summon had been activated um, in his parked Tesla and uh, unfortunately in front of the Tesla was a flatbed truck or at least some sort of truck carrying some very flat cargo in the back um, and the Model S did not see it and it uh, summoned itself into that um, cargo uh, damaging the windshield. Um, nobody was hurt in those latter two incidents um, but they still involved some of the automatic um, features of the Tesla. So uh, if you're watching this and you don't know who I am um, I am basically a self-proclaimed Tesla enthusiast. Uh, I got a Model S 70D in November of 2015, and I've been using it and Autopilot since, and uh, vlogging about the experience and road trips as much as I can. Just to start off, uh, the purpose of Autopilot, so I, um, I had a Tesla when the first version was released, uh, which was beta, and I believe it was 7.0 at that time. Um, and the overall purpose of what Tesla calls autopilot is essentially remove some of the tedium uh, in certain driving situations uh, to make driving both more convenient, relaxing, as well as safer. And the two situations that were specifically identified by Tesla that autopilot is um, encouraged to be used is on freeway speeds or uh, on on freeways and uh, in bumper to bumper traffic. Um, when when uh, Autopilot was first released, Elon had made statements saying that those are the scenarios that Autopilot is most accurate and most reliable. Um, and then it was also released with um, many descriptions of uh, driver responsibility, driver supervision, um, even hands on the wheel. Um, it was very explicit in how it was supposed to be used. Um, it never called it autonomous. Um, it always called it autopilot with the implication that this was early software and then that um, fully autonomous kind of um, driving would eventually come with uh, later hardware. Um, so that sort of brings up the subject of the name itself, uh, autopilot. Um, as some of some have sort of accused uh, or made the accusation that because of the name autopilot, users might falsely assume that it's capable of uh, more than it actually is and then sort of be lulled into a false sense of security and putting themselves, the car, and other drivers at risk uh, or pedestrians or what have you. And, you know, my perspective on that is that none of the incidents that have happened um, have been in Tesla owners who were unfamiliar with the limitations of uh, the autopilot software. So it wasn't like, um, you know, the guy in Florida thought to himself like, you know, wow, I have autopilot software. Um, autopilot sounds like it can, you know, I shouldn't have to pay attention. The car can drive itself no matter what. And uh, I'll just turn it on and let the car go. Well, that's kind of what he did um, by you know, not paying attention to the road. I don't think that that was a miscommunication between Tesla and the user. I think that was a user's choice. And I know like, so when I, when first, when Autopilot first came out, actually I got my car shortly after it had come out, but so when I first tried it, like there's this initial like reservation, like is this really what it says it is? It can it do what it actually says it does? And so you're like hyper aware when you're first using it. 
And then as you learn more and more about um, what situations it's good in and what it's not in, you learn like where you can kind of uh, give it more control versus where you either have to watch it more or you can just not use it at all because it's it's not as reliable. So like you start out not trusting it and then you develop trust over time. So it's not like you start out with like, oh, Tesla calls it autopilot, so I should be able to take a nap or something, which um, people have very stupidly uh, done on uh, YouTube and stuff, but that's a, that's a different that's a different thing. My point is that the name autopilot I don't think is the cause of lack of discretion in the user. Um, one of the reasons that I think the autopilot term is actually appropriate is that when, when the car is driving itself in traffic or in freeway, on the freeway, it is actually driving. It's not just lane assist. You know, it's not just like correcting, you know, if you're drifting in a lane, it's not, it's not just correcting. It's, it's actually driving. So, you know, things like lane assist and, uh, you know, active cruise control, you know, it builds on all those concepts, but it does bring them into a package where it is actually driving the car. Uh, and it's kind of like having your young teenager drive your car or something. Like, you don't just go to sleep. You know, like, you have to watch it because it's, um, it's, it's in beta, um, which basically means teenage years for software. Um, so it's, it's different than the other manufacturers like corrective approaches as opposed to the car is actually driving. So I consider it autopilot. Um, it feels like autopilot. It's, I mean, I'm the pilot, but it's driving automatically, uh, with limitations. And that brings me to, uh, limitations. So I've, you know, just in my own use, you very quickly identify where the limitations are. So first, and things that it doesn't see, stationary objects and uh, thin or small objects, it, it you know, won't identify. So a pole or a tree, um, a person, traffic cones, garbage cans, uh, it's not necessarily going to see those as it's driving by. What it is good at identifying is the, is the car in front of it. It's extremely good at identifying the car in front of it and following that car or avoiding a collision with that car. It's actually not very good at identifying a parked car on the side. So I actually don't use autopilot if there are parked cars on the side of the road um, and, there's, and there's no white line on the side to guide uh, the software. Um, I've, I mean, I haven't had it crash into it and I haven't, you know, tested that and let it just run its course. But I have had situations where I have had to turn, take control because I knew it was getting too close to a parked car um, on the side of the road. Um, let's see, sharp curves, uh, like in residential streets or something. Um, you know, once, once the lines start curving too much, it sort of loses where they are for some reason. And um, it'll, it'll surrender control to you. And that's in contrast to on freeways where curves, uh, they have to be more gentle because, because of the high speed of the vehicles. And it's extremely, extremely good at um, um, detecting and maintaining its trajectory within uh, freeway lines. Um, what else? Thin objects, um, such as flatbed trucks. You know, if, if there's no giant object there, um, it's not gonna see that. I think I mentioned uh, cyclists. So when you learn of these limitations, you learn uh, where autopilot is going to be set up for success and where it's going to have a lot of difficulty and it's either going to miss things or it's going to throw back control with you, throw back control to you. Um, and you also gain confidence in it. And, uh, you know, like I've driven across the U.S. twice now and I'm very confident when I'm on the freeway um, and, you know, there's there's no cross traffic. So that's a key. There's no cross traffic and I can see for miles ahead. And, you know, I, I keep checking in, make sure there's nothing there. Um, but I'm not driving, the car is driving, and I have a high degree of confidence that it's gonna maintain its course, but I still need to be aware for like, you know, random things or unexpected uh, stuff. So you, you become much more comfortable with it. Uh, the exception being Kim from the Tesla channel, or Kim from the YouTube channel, 
like Tesla. Um, if you see videos of her using autopilot, she can barely do it yet. Um, she's actually hyper vigilant when autopilot is on. Um, which I am as well in certain conditions. So if, if I'm on a highway that has uh, cross traffic or stop lights, there's a lot of situations where autopilot just can't handle. So I know that I, um, you know, I'm going to be taking control quite a bit. Okay, so that's, um, you know, the, the purpose, nomenclature, and uses and limitations of autopilot. So my response to the, uh, to the current situations, um, I guess the biggest thing is, question that comes up is, is autopilot safe? And I definitely say yes. Um, and I would say yes, as properly used by Tesla's de uh, description. If used according to its description, um, it's you know very safe, and I think it actually saves lives because where it's where it's best used, which is in these monotonous uh, either straightaways or even even you know freeways with curves or in uh, bumper to bumper traffic, those are situations where human drivers are extremely prone to uh, distraction or dozing off or something like that. So autopilot never dozes off and um, so it has the potential to maintain course and um, prevent those kinds of human errors. Does it have its own error set? Sure. It's not going to anticipate or be able to respond to a variety of, of issues um, where humans currently excel better, but it is able to assist the human and eliminate some of human error. Um, so I think that adds safety in the in the broad sense. But again, it has to be used appropriately, just like um, you know some of these other vehicles with uh, not quite as advanced systems uh, like lane assist or um, you know even the traffic. Um, traffic aware cruise control or whatever it's called um, in those situations like drivers actually have to be more vigilant than an autopilot because of the limitations of their software so properly used those features enhance safety but if they're improperly used just like anything else um, you're gonna you increase the potential for um, errors um, and such Elon Musk has actually highlighted this himself a couple times and said, um, you know, it's auto, autopilot use has reduced the number of um, uh, crashes or fatalities per, you know, miles driven and that kind of stuff. And that's probably true. Um, you know, that doesn't really take into account, like, um, okay, how, like how many accidents. <coughs> How many accidents have been prevented by humans actually intervening with autopilot? Um, you know, so that's that's a statistic um, on its own. I did want to talk a little bit about the radar um, because intuitively it doesn't quite make sense, especially with this Florida incident, where the vehicle has a radar system that is detecting things like uh, hundreds of feet in advance. So what's the deal with that? And um, Tesla has, um, on electric.co, there's an article about, with Tesla's statement uh, saying that the way the radar uh, influences braking, automatic braking, is that anytime there's a, um, a ground interruption or an interruption in the ground plane in front of the car uh, detected by radar um, or, or detected at all, it will break. If, if that object cross-checks uh, with the radar signature. Um, and in the case of this tractor trailer, because, because the uh, trailer was kind of high, the radar would have detected it, but because there was space underneath, the radar signature would have looked like an overhead sign, which the system is programmed not to break every time it goes under an overhead sign. Um, so that does, that does kind of make sense in those situations. Uh, but that doesn't quite cover the incident in Europe where it was on traffic, uh, it was on cruise control and it bumped uh, into, the, um, into the parked truck. Tesla also said that the auto emergency brake, braking 
um, only activates. Well, I should say it does not activate if it calculate if the if the uh, car calculates that there is a path that the driver can take to avoid the collision. So it gives you all the alerts, and then it expects you to take the evasive action um, if if it calculates that that there is one possible. And then, of course, that begs the question: like, well, what if it's not possible? And that brings up a, a, a video that I think it was Cayman Auto did testing uh, auto braking when there's a person, when it detects a person. And Tesla also said that the emergency brakes, they don't go off unless it's a calculated uh, severe uh, collision or something like that. Like it has to be a certain severity for it to, um, you know, initiate bringing the vehicle to a stop. Um, and it said for that reason, it is not a good idea to uh, test out the system on live subjects. Basically saying that it, it won't prevent your car from bumping into things, um, but it is designed to either reduce the severity of impact or reduce a severe, or, or um, avoid a severe impact. Uh, so it's quite a bit more complex than initially thought. So in summary, um, I think properly used autopilot is safe. Um, I, I use it a lot less uh, than I used to just because you know it's not very relaxing if you like have to be hyper vigilant about the system so if, if there's an areas if I'm driving in situations where I know it's not going to be super confident then I just drive myself and uh, but I still use it if, if there's traffic um, in my city here in Grand Rapids we don't have a lot of traffic so that's not a big issue but um, or if I'm driving long distance on freeways, I'll um, definitely use it. Definitely makes you more aware of like situations where, um, you know, I can think of situations like, oh, you know, I've let myself be more distracted because the car is driving itself. Um, but I mean, before people pick, pick up stones on that issue, that's not unique to autopilot. I mean, you know, there's cell phones and, and navigation systems and, um, you know, kids in the back seat or something there's all kinds of things that uh, people shaving while they're driving or reading books or something there's all kinds of things where uh, people can uh, use poor judgment in um, driving attentiveness not just autopilot um, so uh, but you know anytime there's a serious accident it makes you reconsider like your practices and stuff like that and that's good um, you want to do that from time to time and make sure you're driving safely. Um, there is supposed to be a Autopilot 8, or not Autopilot, but Tesla Software 8 uh, update coming soon, I think this summer, uh, including updates to um, Autopilot. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that is and um, how they've improved the software. And the number of miles that they've logged is just insane. Um, you know, it's it's in the billions. Um, I don't know if autopilot uh, miles are billions, but definitely like Tesla driven miles overall is in the billions. So that's pretty crazy. I hope these comments have been helpful. I think these recent events have uh, just caused some additional processing of uh, what is autopilot and what is it not and how should it be used. It's definitely something that I want to continue using and I think is safe for others to use according to the uh, proper instructions. And hopefully, um, as systems uh, evolve and improve, uh, eventually we'll have truly automated systems um, that do not require uh, human input at all unless needed. So again, I hope these comments have been helpful and uh, maybe given some perspective um, from a uh, Tesla and Autopilot user. And I'll see you in the next video.